Traditionally, American-born hockey players come from a select few areas of the country. States like Minnesota, Massachusetts, Wisconsin, Michigan, and upstate New York and New Jersey. The rest of the country, however, is a little more underrepresented due to the fact that there are so many other sports to choose from that are more popular in the U.S. and also due to the fact that hockey is so expensive to play and some cities and states have a small amount of ranks in general. But with the NHL expanding to more and more non-traditional markets over the past several decades, putting teams in areas where hockey was never really a thing, this has really helped to grow the game in the USA and has given the NHL more talent than ever coming out of this country. Prime example number one is Austin Matthews. The 24-year-old superstar is currently the NHL's best player born in the United States. And with the season he's having, many are arguing that he could be the best player in the entire league. The 6'3 center was born in California but spent most of his childhood in Arizona and played a lot of his amateur hockey there as a kid. In 2016, Matthews became the first number one overall pick from a non-traditional hockey market. And from the moment he entered the league, he hasn't stopped scoring goals, winning awards, helping his team make the playoffs, and consistently getting better every single year. Here's how he quickly became hockey's best goal scorer, and why he could end up becoming one of the best ever when it's all said and done. Just like how Matthews came from a non-traditional hockey market, he would also choose a non-traditional path to the NHL for an American-born player. Instead of playing college hockey in the NCAA, or junior hockey in Canada, Matthews would decide to play overseas in the Swiss League for his draft year. This enabled him to make some money while playing overseas and also play against tougher competition and many guys who have played pro hockey for a long time in various leagues, including former NHLers. At the time, some questioned Matthews' decision and were upset that he chose a less traditional path. But this kid had already proven to be a dominant force in the USHL with the US national team when he scored a ridiculous 55 goals and 117 points in 60 games. So. When he went to Zurich to play with the ZSC Lions, he was more than ready and would end up finishing the season 10th in league scoring with 46 points in 36 games and was second in the league in points per game among players who played at least 20 games. All before even getting drafted to the NHL. And in his first NHL season, he would not disappoint, scoring four goals in his first ever game and ending up with 40 on the season, 69 points in 82 games, and winning the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. Those 40 goals tied for second in the league behind only Sidney Crosby, who had 44. Over the next three years, Matthews would continue to get better and better, increasing his points per game totals each year, and even scoring 47 goals in 70 games during the 2019-20 season before the season was shut down. That year, he would also finish 10th in the Hart Trophy vote and missed out on the Rocket Richard by a single goal. It was starting to become clear that Matthews was becoming an unstoppable force, much like Alex Ovechkin in his prime. And if Ovi wasn't careful, Matthews would soon overtake him as the NHL's best goal scorer. In the 2020-21 season, with the divisions realigned and all of the Canadian teams only playing against one another, a couple players in particular went on pretty incredible runs. Connor McDavid had a ridiculous 105 points in just 56 games, good for a 1.88 point per game average and 21 more points than the second place finisher Leon Dreisaitl, his own teammate. And Austin Matthews blew away the competition with his goal total, which ended up being 41 in his 52 games, good for a .79 goal per game average and eight more goals than the second place McDavid, who had 33. Matthews would finish second in the Hart Trophy race to McDavid and will win his first Rocket Richard. While many people were impressed by the seasons of Matthews and McDavid last year, some people tried to say that the reason for all that success was due to the fact that they were in the North Division, which was tabbed by many as the easiest division. But now well over halfway through the 2021-22 season, the same names are at the top of the point leaderboards yet again. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Goudreau, and Matthews being four of the top five point leaders, all playing on Canadian teams. The only difference being that this year they are playing against all teams from around the league in the regular season yet again. And yes, once again, Matthews is leading the league in goals with his remarkable 45 and 56 games so far. And when you look at the historical context of what Matthews has been able to do so far in his NHL career, it's truly wild. 
So far in his 390 NHL games, Matthews has 244 goals, which puts him at a goals per game of 0.63. This puts him in fifth all-time in goals per game in NHL history among players with a minimum of 200 goals. This is higher than both Wayne Gretzky and Alex Ovechkin, who are ranked 7th and 8th. Behind only Mike Bossy, Mario Lemieux, Cy Denneny, and Babe Dye. Bossy and Lemieux numbers 1 and 2 with a .76 and .75 goals per game, and Denneny and Dye at 3 and 4, who also have a .75 goals per game, but also played in the 1920s when the NHL first came to be, and was obviously a much different era for goal scoring. And yes, I understand Matthews has played far, far less games than both Ovechkin and Gretzky, and even Bossy and Lemieux, but the fact that he's so high up on this list and still getting better and better each year is almost unbelievable. Also, when you look at the goal totals from Ovechkin's first six seasons, albeit he did play over 80 games more than Matthews so far, his goals per game average was an almost identical 0.63. It'll be interesting to see if Matthews can continue to consistently put pucks in the back of the net and stay atop the Rocket Richard leaders, but from what we've seen so far, it's definitely possible. The thing that makes number 34 so dangerous is the fact that he can really score so many different ways. And not to say that Ovi can't, Matthews has the ability to shoot from range, boasting arguably the best wrist shot and release in the NHL currently. He can also score from in tight and trick goalies into thinking he's going to go high and then slip the puck 5 hole. And he also has world-class hands, as good as anyone in the league, which makes him a weapon on breakaways and if he's ever one-on-one -on -one with a defender or a goalie. And with a career shooting percentage currently at 16.5%, if you give him more than a second or two to shoot from anywhere at the top of the faceoff dot and in, good luck, because he's more than likely going to make you pay. It's pretty clear that Austin Matthews is the best goal scorer in the NHL right now. And at just 24 years old currently, He's only scratching the surface for just how good he could be. Make sure to let me know what you think of Matthews down in the comments. Does he have the ability to potentially be recognized as an even better player than McDavid? And will he go down as one of the greatest goal scorers in NHL history by the time he's all done? Thanks so much for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.